Hello and welcome back to Beauty Within. It's your hosts, Rowena <laughs> and Felicia. And today we're going to be diving deeper into one of the skincare industry's favorite ingredients, vitamin C, or otherwise known as ascorbic acid. I've been a longer time user of vitamin C compared to Felicia for brightening my freckles and sunspots because my skin is fairer, so I need as much help as I can get yeah. with lightening. I only started incorporating it into skincare more like over the last year, more for acne marks and like brightening and a man has it been a game changer because I think there's other ingredients that really help to lighten and brighten but vitamin C is like the gold standard it's been around yeah for a long tried and true very a lot of clinical studies saying that it works today we're going to explain more about what to look for in the formulation of all these vitamin C products, specifically the differences between oil-based and water formulations. And on top of that, I talk about the different derivatives and how they all play into making our skin look brighter, look stronger inside and out because vitamin C is consumed. Yeah, yes. and, and it's quite complex. Yeah, So many different like branches. Oh my God. Powder, oil, yes. water. <laughs> and this episode, we have a super exciting treat because we know how much you guys love The Ordinary. We were lucky enough to actually go to visit Desium headquarters in Toronto to talk to the Abnormal Beauty Company team and it was so cool. You guys will be, cannot wait to share with you guys yeah. because we have a bunch of content coming up for you guys with them. So while we were there, one of the special people we chatted with was none other than the man in charge of formulating all the ordinary products. And he's the chief scientific officer of the whole Desium company. And so we sat down and picked his brain about all things formulation, products and skills in health. So we'll be sharing what he had to say about vitamin C and you won't want to miss it. Before diving into all that, it's important to understand the role that vitamin C plays in our body, not only topically through our skincare, but when we ingest it. So what is vitamin C and collagen? Vitamin C is a water-soluble vitamin, and why we need it in the body is because it's a cofactor in producing collagen, and it's a strong antioxidant. Basically, it lets your body create a cushioning throughout the body, as well as a naturally strong skin barrier. And I bet most people just think of citrus fruits when it comes to vitamin C, which is true. But did you know that bell peppers, strawberries, kiwis, papaya actually contain more vitamin C than citrus fruits like oranges? That's wild. That's crazy, right? More you know. <laughs> The daily serving is recommended to be between 65 and 90 milligrams, and an orange contains about 69 milligrams, while the bell pepper has 190, broccoli has 132, and papaya has 88. Mm -hmm. So there's a little fun fact, friends. <laughs> so when we consume vitamin C, it has to be absorbed by our small intestines, and if we have too much of it, the ascorbic acid in the blood levels is high, and that will mean it just gets excreted through our urine, so no harm done. Funny story, when I was little you know there's vitamin c tablets, tablets. that are like that chewables like candy yeah it's kind of hard but you can eventually chew it yeah, yeah, yeah. i finished a bottle and we will also find vitamin C in our skin naturally as well, but because the nutrients we consume don't always travel all the way through the epidermis layer of our skin, the most effective way to get it into your skin is to lather it on. So when it comes to vitamin C in skincare products, there are four main advantages for the skin, which you probably all have heard of because it's on every labeling yes. of every skincare product. The first is overall brightening of the skin and helping with lightening acne marks, sunspots, and hyperpigmentation. And vitamin C helps these skin conditions by interacting with the copper ions at the tyrosinase level of the skin and it inhibits it from producing, which means less melanin, which then means less hyperpigmentation. Ding, ding! Ding, ding! <laughs> and next is building collagen and elastin. As we mentioned, our bodies need vitamin C to make collagen and collagen is a protein fiber that is abundant through our entire body and it's what we associate with youthful radiance and Skin. So you can imagine yourself jumping on a little trampoline and the trampoline just keeps bouncing you back up, right? You're like, yay! And that's essentially what collagen does for the skin. With less collagen, the trampoline will start to look a little sad. It'll sag like the ones that have been out in the sun for like years and years. Oh, yeah. And all the strings have like depleted. It's like a sad, decrepit town. <laughs> oh my God, you know when you're like driving through? Yeah. <laughs> and there's like abandoned trampolines. 
and it's just tearing because yeah. it's so dry. Yeah, and then the steel is like broken. Anyway, so, so that's that, our skin. <laughs> yes, that is what happens when we don't have enough elastin and collagen production so with using vitamin C to kind of build it back up to make sure that bounce is still there. Something else that's really important in forming elastin and collagen are micro minerals, specifically zinc, copper, and manganese. Basically, they're leafy green vegetables like kale, lettuce, as well as things like pineapple and mushroom. And if you really want to up your collagen game, you'll want to consume nuts, which are also known as phytoestrogens, and phytoestrogens also help with your overall hormone balance. Yay! <laughs> we need to balance our hormones! <laughs> and you'll find these in flax seeds, pecan, cashews, and almonds. I used to think nuts were the most boring snacks ever. But like they, they so were good. like old people. Yeah. <laughs> old people snacks. Or what you take when you go hiking. <laughs> yeah. But it's good for you. Another one of the main benefits of vitamin C is to fight free radicals. <laughs> and hopefully we know by now that free radicals can really speed up the aging of our skin because free radicals are abundant in polluted areas and also in smoking areas, which is why smokers really do have like very ashy, dry, gray skin. So you need antioxidants to act like little bodyguards to soak up any potential free radical damage before it happens. Or the best, best, best thing to do. <laughs> the best thing to do. The best thing to do is just to not smoke. <laughs> yes. And the last major benefit is that there's a synergy that happens when you use vitamin C with other ingredients like vitamin E, arbutin, ferulic acid, as well as SPF. These ingredients will help to stabilize the unstable nature of vitamin C as well as strengthen its overall effect on the skin. And ferulic acid is also known for its UV protection properties and arbutin is really great at reducing uneven skin tone or texture and so when you use these all together with a sunscreen it's like this indestructible shield of youth. Yeah. So now with all that said, how does vitamin C travel through our skin? As one of the water-soluble vitamins, vitamin C is a small enough molecule that can pass or diffuse through our cell membranes to be absorbed through the epidermis and then transport it to the dermis underneath. But the more important thing to be aware of is that vitamin C absorption through the skin depends a lot on the pH of the vitamin C product. Because our skin is slightly acidic, you know, on the pH scale, it's between 4 to 5 and 5.5. So for vitamin C to be effective on our skin, the pH should be around 3.5. And the studies have shown that if it's a little bit higher, it will start to be less effective. So now with all that said, we've gotten to the portion of the video where we're going to take you to Toronto. Here's the interview we did with Prudby, Chief Scientific Officer of the Abnormal Beauty Company, who is far more qualified to talk about things like this than yes. we are. And the information that he dropped on us, I remember when we were sitting there, we're like, whoa. The whole time the both of us was just like. Yeah, it's like everything makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Roll clip. Vitamin C is super soluble in water. If it's just water, and if we're talking about smaller concentrations, you apply the water that is carrying the vitamin C as well as the hydration in the skin is good enough for vitamin C to penetrate. Because one, vitamin C in just water is protonated, it means there is a definite charge to it. pH is on the lower side, so it makes it way easier through the skin. Versus if vitamin C is solubilized in a medium where it is not water, then the evaporation rate is way less than water. So it can allow vitamin C to completely get into the skin. And then when we say completely get into your skin, how far down is that? So there's multi-facets where vitamin C can be directed to. Generally speaking, epidermis and dermis are the areas where vitamin C should be reaching. But an interesting thing is there is a receptor that a technology provider identified. It's sodium-dependent vitamin C transporter. So those are situated in epidermis areas. That is the one that actually directs vitamin C into the skin. So pretty much you can take one active ingredient and you can really direct it based on your formulation and concentration to different areas within the skin. Mm. Fascinating. Wow.
So basically, the TLDR breakdown of that previous segment you guys just watched is that our skin doesn't necessarily absorb more vitamin C just because a product has a higher concentration of it. It really comes down to the combination of concentration and potency and the delivery agent, whether that's water, oil, or how they work together to achieve the best delivery system to the skin. Before we jump into looking at different product categories that have vitamin C and are our personal favorites, let's first understand how the vitamin C derivatives really work on our skin because you'll find that a lot of products out there will contain these. So derivatives work similar to pure L-ascorbic acid, just that the potency is not as strong, which means it will be better for sensitive skinned people. But derivatives can only work after they've been converted to L-ascorbic acid in the body. So with the chemical conversion that happens, this generally means that it will deliver less bioavailable vitamin C to our cells in the epidermis. Here's a chart for reference with the corresponding potency that we found. Bing! You might not have seen these super scientific sounding words until now, but now that you've seen it, you'll probably start seeing them everywhere. You can thank us later. Yeah, it's all over <laughs> your skincare labels. We bet your bottoms on it. <laughs> we bet our bottoms on it. Yeah. <laughs> we won't put you through that. <laughs> so the potency refers to the amount of vitamin C that is actually delivered to your cells. For example, in one gram of l acid, one gram of vitamin C is delivered to the cells in our skin. But for one gram of sodium ascorbyl phosphate, just over a half a gram of vitamin C is delivered to the cells. But... That's not all. It's Be never all. It's never all. <laughs> because it's not just about the potency. What Perudvi was also emphasizing was its formulation of the product that will determine whether the vitamin C is directed and able to work on the skin. So let's take a look at some of our favorite vitamin C products. Yes. Okay, so first starting off with the oil-based vitamin C products. We have the Biosone Squalane Vitamin C Rose Oil that you've been liking. I love it. I feel like most vitamin C, the powder form, can be a little coarse when you apply it. And then with vitamin C serums, they just tend to oxidize really quickly. Like the, the corner, the sides of the bottle, they it'll just start crusty. dripping and it gets, you yeah. know, orangey or like brown. Mm -hmm. So I think for the oil, to me, like uh, sensorially how it applied and just the way that it worked, I, I just that like little it. pink bottle like sold it's itself so as well. Yeah. Too cute. Yeah. Yes. So looking at the formulation of this one, the base ingredient is squalane, which is the oil. And the vitamin C derivative that they use in this one is the tetrahexadexyl ascorbate, which is the fourth ingredient in the entire formulation. So this one in terms of potency is not definitely not as strong as the l acid, which is why probably you could very easily use it every day, right? And you don't feel any sort of irritation. You probably don't even need to think too much about like whether it will um, irritate the skin in conjunction with other skincare because it's like, it's easy to use. Because this derivative isn't as potent as l acid, mm. it won't oxidize as quickly mm. as the OG, you know? Yeah you know, l acid. But my only thought when I see the Biosons bottle is that it is clear. Probably best to store in a cool, dark area. Yes, mm -hmm. so keeping it in, you know, away from heat, away from light, making sure you screw it on, all of that is like so important when it comes to vitamin yeah. C, otherwise you just waste your money. Moving on to another oil base, the Ordinary Ascorbic Acid, 8% and Alpha Arbutin. So this formula combines two of those great ingredients that work hand in hand mm -hmm. together. Arbutin is great for brightening and they're both solubilized in a completely water-free formula for the ideal stability. Vitamin C and alpha arbutin are less stable in formulations that contain water and use of them combined in formulations containing water is highly discouraged. So with this one, you might feel that it's slightly oily for a few seconds after application, despite the fact that it is completely free of oil. So this is from The Ordinary's website. Mm. They do a really good job at Explaining. breaking down all of these different yeah. ingredients and products and how it's used and what you might expect from it. Yeah, and the cool thing is, you know, because they're all about science, everything is based in science, there's so many different types of vitamin C products. So if you're really into vitamin C and um, you're kind of particular yeah. about which ones, you can really pick and choose. Another example of a base you will find is 
silicone to pair with vitamin C. Mm. And the example that we have is Paula's Choice C25 Booster. It has 25% vitamin C. And the first ingredient is this, <laughs> that I'm not even gonna try to pronounce. Yeah. It is for hydration and it's a type of silicone. And the second ingredient is ascorbic acid, which is the vitamin C. This one I use at the end of my skincare yeah. routine, so after moisturizing everything. And you don't want to rub it on because of that um, consistency. Powdery. It's no. kind of, it's not great. Mm -hmm. It's like moussey. Yeah. yeah. I don't it's know. like velvety moussey. Yeah. And it only comes in this like yeah. really little thing yeah. because you only need a really little portion of it. You just kind of like pat it over discoloration, mm -hmm. hyperpigmentation, and it really does brighten up those areas. And it's worth noting here that whenever you use skincare products in general, but especially vitamin C, mm. pair it with the sunscreen. And what you'll notice for these oil-based vitamin C products is that they don't contain water. And as we learned before, one, it's because water speeds up the decomposition composition of l acid to inactive dehydroascorbic acid. So using a water-free formula keeps the vitamin C levels higher for longer, translating to a more effective product. Mm -hmm. And second point, only water-based products have a pH. And since the cream or oil-based products don't have a pH, l acid will be unionized and can penetrate the skin quickly, again, which means it increases the effectiveness. Moving on to water-based vitamin Cs. The first one is Olake. Ule. 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 And you know, I learned how to say that from Diplo. Ule Henriksen. His he morning that? get ready with me. Yeah. <laughs> Ule Henriksen. They have a truth serum vitamin C collagen booster, which is pretty popular in a lot of articles. Yeah. You see this everywhere. I've used that with the the orange one with the blue one before. And this is what Lab Muffin said. You'll notice that it doesn't contain L-ascorbic acid, but instead contains vitamin C derivatives, sodium ascorbyl phosphate and calcium ascorbate. So she said sodium ascorbyl phosphate is much more stable and expensive compared to L-ascorbic acid and it absorbs at a higher pH too, which just means less irritation. Okay, this is one that I've been using recently that I've really loved, but Ooh. it's um, recently oxidized. Oh no. <laughs> it's like it's, a yay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's always a balance in life. Uh -huh. It's the Obagi Vitamin C and Arbutin Brightening Serum. It's a serum and we kind of think of serums as like this a little bit goopy. Yeah. But this is like a full on toner consistency. Ooh. It's so lightweight and sinks so it's quickly. Like, um, so this one has 10% L-ascorbic acid and the ingredients are water, propylene glycol, alcohol, dinat, and then L-ascorbic acid and arbutin. So what I found using this after I think a month is my skin just completely evened out. Wow. Yeah, I don't know if this is because it's like the first time that I've used a vitamin C mm -hmm. product so consistently. But I'm like, wow, your <laughs> this skin's is amazing. amazing. Oh my gosh. We're not really gonna go into it. If you wanna know more, I actually have another video, you know, in the day and night routine. Yes. So you can check that out. So next is the Purito Vitamin C Serum. There's 10% vitamin C and 84% hyaluronic acid. So it's super hydrating. Mm. But this, I believe when you first get this product, I think it comes without the pump on. So you need to take uh. off the cap to keep it like the integrity uh. or like the formulation. What is it? The, like the air from yeah, seeping yeah, into yeah, it. Yeah, like yeah. Pre While prevent oxidation. Waiting. But the good thing about this is the bottle itself is a dark brown yes. color. Yes. So it's it's helpful. So for this, they also use ascorbic acid. So this one, I guess, is more hydrating because of the 84% intense hyaluronic yeah. acid. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because Prudvi also said that vitamin C enhances hyaluronic acid in our skin. So that's another good synergy. <laughs> I just think of synergy as such a funny word, like especially synergy. when it's used in business. Yeah. I'm like synergistic. <laughs> synergy. <laughs> yeah. Synergy between So long power synergy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so moving on to another Paula's Choice. It's interesting because they have both types. They yes. have a water-based one and also a non-water-based one. And one that we use for a while now is the C15 Booster, and this has 15% vitamin C, as well as vitamin E, as well as ferulic acid. So Ooh. they know their combination. Yeah. And I think this is a really good example of how the higher concentration needs to be paired with something that's not yeah. water-based. Yeah. And the water-based one is 15%, mm. while the non-water is 25%. Yeah. You know, like, I never thought about it yeah. until this, and I'm like, I remember, that's why. I remember trying the 25, I was like, I don't like this consistency, so I'm gonna stop using it. Yeah. 
But and it's now like, I'm like, it's calculated. There's no reason why. <laughs> So yes, looking at the ingredients, it's water and then ascorbic acid. And this one is really cool because with the boosters, you add it into your serums or you add it into your moisturizers. Yeah. So since you have like a thousand hyaluronic acid serums, now we know it's a really good base for mm -hmm. mixing vitamin C into. Yeah. Speaking of which, vitamin C powders mm. can also be mixed into they can. Yeah, hyaluronic acid serums or even your creams. I think there's like a little word of warning mm. because it's so potent, it's yeah. pure ellascorbic acid. You don't really know how much to mix yeah. in. The thing is, I feel like most brands like Good Molecules and The Ordinary have little spatulas. And to test it out, I think you can maybe start with like a fourth of a scoop. Yeah. And the scoops are very small. They're yeah. like They're like this tiny. They're pretty tiny. So tiny that I lost the scoop. And then what do you do? <laughs> Just kind of eyeball. Just, yeah. <laughs> Trying both of the Ordinary and Good Molecules, I remember the Ordinary's finer grained Grain. and not as coarse as Good Molecules. But that being said, Good Molecules isn't coarse coarse either. Mm. A lot of great reviews say it's like the least non-skin tearing vitamin mm. C powder. I love using it because of all its benefits. You know, it's a a uh, free radical scavenger, it helps as an antioxidant, it protects your skin against the sun, UV rays, UV damage. I use it during the day. Mm. And then I save mm -hmm. other ingredients like retinols yeah. at night. For me, I like using vitamin C in the morning as well because I mm. think, you know, when you pair antioxidant with sunscreen, it's like power yeah. couple, power... Power couple. Power... power combo. Yeah. Couple combo. And at night, I have been using the Biosance vitamin C just for that Oil. extra boost. Mm. Because at night, our skin goes through replenish repair. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because of the elastin and collagen production that vitamin C can offer, you can use it at night. That's why the Biosance oil you can use it day and night. Yeah. Day and Wake night. up with the bouncy trampoline skin. Mm. <laughs> okay, so what did we learn today? What did we learn today? Pop quiz! <laughs> Just kidding, we'll never do that to you guys. <laughs> Vitamin C protects the antioxidants in our bodies as well as on our skin. It helps with skin brightening, it boosts collagen production. For an effective concentration at minimum, it should be at least 5%, but it's usually 10 or higher. Yeah. You can even go up to like 25. 100% with the powder. <laughs> Oh yeah. But then you're not that's rubbing true. powder directly on your face. Oh yes, don't do that. <laughs> oh my God, that's sadistic. And usually when you find any sort of serum or whatever it is, it's usually at a pH that's 3.5 and under. The main concern with vitamin C is that it is highly unstable mm. and it is very finicky. Yes. So choose your products carefully. Be mindful of the packaging. Be mindful of the formulation because yeah. most of the time we don't know. So that is vitamin C folks. And on that note, because it has such great brightening properties. We want to ask you guys, what are we going to ask them? What is one thing that you do or what is who's one person in your life that never fails to brighten up your day when it's not so bing bing? Yeah. Or what's like an activity or something that yeah. you do to brighten your own day when in times of funk? Leave that below, tell us, share with us so we can all like elevate and brighten our lives yeah. on sad lonely days. <laughs> to help each other feel more bright. Yes. So thank you guys so much for watching this episode and we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. A bing 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 bing. And if you watched our previous video, <laughs> the best thing to do is not smoke. <laughs> Scythed Rowena thigh. <laughs> oh god. <gasps> you heard it here first. Rowena thigh. <laughs> oh my god <goodness. laughs>